The Tour de France is the world's biggest annual sporting event, and now it has come to one of the world's greatest sporting cities. For the first time in the Tour's 104-year history, the finest riders on the planet are starting their three-week odyssey in London. And the British capital is welcoming them with open arms. I want to say how proud we are as a city that the Tour de France has come for its Grand Depart here in London. This is the greatest single sporting event in the world. Thank you, Ken. Thank you for welcoming us in London. Well, Tour de France riders have, of course, already cycled on England's road in 74 and 94, but never here, at the heart of your capital. We thank you, Ken, for having the Tour de France in London. Transport for London has been working towards this weekend for four years. As the agency responsible for the event, it has delivered the technical, marketing and communications aspects of the Grand Depart. It's the biggest annual sporting event in the world. The duration of it is three weeks long, which is uh, unprecedented for a sporting event. You know, the Olympics is two weeks, the World Cup's two weeks and things like that, so it's, uh, it's massive. But before the party can start, a lot of people have to put in a lot of work. And transforming the centre of a busy city like London into a giant, top-class sporting arena is no mean feat. installing two bridges which are part of the eight bridges we're installing for the uh, Tour de France event. The bridges will get pedestrians from uh, one side of the racetrack for the prologue to the other. They will take 5,000 people an hour each so theoretically 10,000 people an hour can cross each side. The streets where the cyclists will race include some of the capital's busiest through routes and constructing a racetrack that can be viewed safely by hundreds of thousands of people is a huge logistical challenge. Up to 20 kilometers of barriers along the route will be decorated with the event's branding. More than 1,600 Grand Depart banners are to be hung from lampposts and 18 giant screens will be set up, the most ever for an event of its kind. It's the first Grand Depart ever of the Tour de France in London. It's bound to attract really huge crowds and we've closed off quite a lot of central London in order to have the race. We're expecting millions of people over the two days of racing. That's a very large event indeed, so we've been planning that actually for four years and we've had partners with us the whole way, the police, the Royal Park, City of Westminster, the other local authorities where the first stage of the race will run on Sunday. It will be uh, perhaps more challenging than many other weekends. Our planning has been meticulous and I think that it will be seen after the event that actually it will pay off. Soon the riders will be racing along some of the most famous streets in London. To get everyone in the mood, a unique Tour de France institution entertains the crowds. It's the publicity caravan, big on colour and razzmatazz, and pretty generous too, with 15 million gifts given out during the course of the race. What did you get? Uh, two of these, banging together, hats, key rings, loud chum the loud hailer. The whole circus that surrounds the Tour de France, you know, some 2,000 promotional vehicles that are going to be in the city, the buses for all the teams, uh, the fans that are coming from all over Europe to watch it, uh, diehards. Um, I think it's going to be just an amazing spectacle. Fantastic. The waiting's over and the pressure's on. The prologue time trial is one of the great high-octane sporting events, and this year it takes place against the majestic backdrop of London's world-famous landmarks. 
The 7.9 kilometer course has been carefully designed to offer a great ride and to take in the best sights the city has to offer. Not that many of the riders have much time for sightseeing. The fastest time, clocked by Fabian Cancellara, is just 8 minutes and 50 seconds, an average speed of 55 kilometers per hour. Destiny's in front of you in many respects. You know, the next nine minutes kind of just defines whether you're going to wear the yellow jersey or not. It'll certainly cement my name in history and uh, be my best sporting moment. Every year there are different stories to be told, but one story, the struggle for the yellow jersey, is constant. The yellow jersey was started by the original uh, conceiver of the race, uh, Monsieur Derange, back in 1903. And they started the yellow jersey to signify who was the leader of the race on any given day. And it's the most coveted trophy that you can have in cycling history. The entertainment isn't confined to the route itself. There's a lot to see and do in the city centre. And best of all, it doesn't cost a penny. you beat an event like this? Biggest annual sporting event in the world and it's free. You can't say any more than that. London and the Tour de France, an ideal combination for a great day out. And lots of families choose to make the most of it, enjoying the wide variety of food on offer. London is one of the world's greenest capitals and right in the centre of the Tour de France action is Hyde Park, London's premier green space. The park has earned a reputation as the capital's favourite place to party outdoors and now the world has come to join in the fun. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an exit only station. This is an exit only station. Please find alternative means at Embankment, Green Park or Waterloo. Two million people converge on London over the weekend to enjoy the Tour de France experience. At the same time, there are several other major events happening in the capital, including tennis at Wimbledon, the Live Earth show at Wembley, and rock concerts at the O2 Arena and Twickenham. On Saturday, London Underground records 2.58 million passenger journeys, the most on a Saturday in its 150-year history. Making sure everyone gets to where they want to go and back again is a daunting task. But London's transport professionals have been planning for this weekend for years. We were very mindful that this is one of the busiest weekends in the history of the Tube. And not just because of the Tour de France, so that was the major part of it, but because we had a range of events going on elsewhere in London. And it was important to not only service those, but also the needs of people who were just coming up for what they would normally do on a Saturday, to go to the park or to go shopping. We had to look at a range of needs and make sure that as far as we could, we, we looked after everybody. And on the ground, to make sure everything runs smoothly, are 1,800 volunteer marshals. They're briefed on how to answer questions from the public and on how to keep the crowd safe. Please refrain from using your mobile phones whilst you're working. Uh, do not accept any responsibility for looking after any personal belongings from members of the public. So if some bloke says, can you hold that bag while I take a photograph, don't do it. For obvious security reasons, guys, yeah? I wanted to be part of this great big event. I'm a very keen volunteer. I have volunteered at lots of games, um, other events. Loved the tour of Britain, so wanted to give this one a shot. Really looking forward to it. Information and maps are also available on posters, in leaflets and on websites, making sure the spectators get the most from the experience and enjoy their day.
Wherever the Tour de France goes, the Permanence goes too. It's the travelling headquarters of the Tour, the centre of official business concerning the competition. Keeping the show on the road is an entourage of 4,800 people in around 2,000 vehicles, and among them hundreds of journalists sending their stories around the globe. And the world is watching. In total, around 2 billion people in 190 countries will follow the tour on television. The main facility down in Docklands has been superb, um, very well equipped, lots of space, um, all the facilities you'd need. I know that Transport for London have worked extremely hard on, on making sure that it ran smoothly and it seems to be running very well indeed. The experts may be burning rubber out on the streets, but this weekend is about more than sheer speed. It's about inspiring people to discover the benefits of cycling. Three months free. So 11,000 extra cycle parking spaces have been created in the city's parks. 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, oh, what? 20, come on, don't give up, don't give up. You have 30 <laughs> meters to go. Finish. You're on camera now. Finish. Finish. Well, it gets people excited about cycling because it's not that um, huge in the UK. So I think this is a really massive event. It's really special, it's unique. To bring it to London is just really exciting and, and it can motivate people to get on their bikes. Come on. 700 is done. Keep going, keep going. Don't give up. More than 2,000 youngsters take part in free cycle training sessions over the weekend, although some of them find the going a little tougher than expected. In the weeks before the event, school children have been encouraged to get on their bikes and companies have been challenged to accommodate cycling as a means for staff to get to and from work. London's communities and schools, the capital's boroughs and businesses, working together to promote cycling and a healthier city. Cyclists have the fitness levels of somebody how much younger than their age? Ten years, well done. It's a great day out for people who can't afford normally to, to go and have a great day out. This is all free, you just turn up there and you see the fastest cyclists on earth that being by you on the streets of London. But also it's about getting the message about cycling. There will be kids watch this race and are inspired to become professional cyclists and follow the route of Bradley Wiggins and others. The object of us bringing the Grand Depart here is to promote cycling. Well, the press this last three weeks or so has been full of people describing how they got on their bikes and went cycling because of the tour. If there's only one in ten actually saw it and enjoyed it and said, right, I'm getting on a bike, that's got to be a success, whether that's in London, whether that's through Kent or whether that's through the rest of the country. It's been a huge success. The lasting legacy of youngsters coming here, watching the world's best cyclists in their own backyard, and hopefully, just hopefully, going back home and talking to their parents about how do I join a cycle club in London? How do I get involved in the sport? You cannot put a price on that. This is the biggest single sporting event in the world. And we want to boost cycling, and cycling is building up again. It's everything we hope for. This is one of two things I've ever done in my life that's turned out better than I hoped. The other was a congestion job. People from all over the world have come to London for the tour, and they've come to a city that has welcomed visitors for centuries. It's a vibrant, diverse capital, and memories of this weekend will leave their mark. Wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Can't wait for the Olympics. I think it's uh, really good. I mean, London's a big place, very vibrant, multicultural, and when anything happens in London, the whole world knows about it. I just like the atmosphere with everybody, uh, you know. I've seen more cyclists today than I have, like, in the whole time I've been riding in London. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought, shall I go, shall I not go? But I'm really pleased I came. It was absolutely fantastic. Any citizen of any country in the world can come here and find a friend and find that the language is spoken, 300 different languages, and find that the faiths are represented and find that this is a melting pot of all communities.
The prologue over, let the race begin. 21 teams of nine riders face a 3,554 kilometer journey that will take them 22 days to complete. Stage one, a 203 kilometer dash to Canterbury and Kent. Three million people have turned out to line the route. During a typical day's racing, the average competitor will consume 5,900 calories. Getting through a hill stage will require up to 9,000 calories. It's just as tough for the bikes themselves. Each competitor is expected to grind their way through three chains over the whole event. Maybe now there's more time for the riders to appreciate their surroundings. It costs a lot to stage an event like the Tour de France, so is it worth it? Well, the cost of the uh, event is around £6 million, and the benefit is uh, more like £60 to £100 million. So the tourism receipts for this weekend uh, we estimate to be probably the biggest weekend of the year, and absolutely the benefits outweigh the costs uh, very significantly. This city churns out sporting events year in, year out. Cup finals, Wimbledons, test matches, the big one-off events, the London Marathon, now the biggest marathon in the world. Tour de France coming here. It does it very well and we shouldn't be backward in saying that we put on events of the very highest calibre. Anything that does come to Lumber on a sporting level is guaranteed to be successful. I can't see there not being anyone inspired by it and if a 14 year old can be inspired by it like I was and get out there on Monday morning and get his bike out then that, that's a great success. A total of 4 million people have watched the tour in London and along the route in Kent. The crowds witness the world's finest cyclists performing at the peak of their abilities, having soaked up the atmosphere of a legendary sporting experience in an unforgettable setting. And at the centre of it all, one of the world's premier cities at the top of its game. Major events and London, an unbeatable combination. I'm a Londoner, I am so proud about this city. Every morning I wake up and come to work in this city, I'm proud to be a Londoner. I'm proud because London continually churns out top-class events and today is one of them.